374 days ago, I decided to challenge myself to use the same distro for two years. Now, at that point, there were many people who said, Matt, you have no chance. Like, you have no chance of using this for two years. Now, granted, I still haven't. It's not there yet, but we're over halfway. And one of the reasons why there was so much doubt over my ability to actually use the same distro for two years was because at that point I was quite the switcher. I had tried a six months challenge before that with Redcore Linux and didn't make it. I only made it about two and a half months. And before that, I was switching every four or five months. And before that, I was a switcher every month. I was a very, I was very much a distro hopper. I liked to, to distro hop because installing Linux because I'm a nerd, is fun. I don't know why it's fun, but it is. It's fun. So before that point, I was very much someone who couldn't stick on the same distro for very long for various reasons, but I wanted to change that. Not only change that perception, but also change my inability to, to stay on a distro because I wanted some stability in my workflow and changing a distro and reinstalling everything every week or every six weeks or whatever it was, was not conducive to productivity. It wasn't conducive to stability because oftentimes when you reinstall stuff, things just don't go the way that you expect them to do. So my goal was to pick a distro that would see me through at least two years. And I didn't want a mainstream, really popular distribution. I didn't want to choose Fedora or Ubuntu or Debian or Arch. I had done all those at various points in time over my course of my Linux career. I wanted something that I hadn't spent a lot of time on, and I wanted something that was a little bit off the beaten path, but not so far off the beaten path that it might have might as well have been Hannah Montana Linux, if you understand what I'm saying. So I chose OpenSUSE. So I've been on OpenSUSE now for well over a year, and I have some thoughts. And I don't make status update videos about this challenge very often. I did one like at the six week mark or something like that, where I talked about the five things I really like or whatever it was. And so I, I don't do this very often. I don't. I didn't want to flood the channel with OpenSUSE content, even though I constantly mention OpenSUSE, including the sticker that I'd show you if I didn't want to ruin the microphone sound. But you know, I talk about OpenSUSE a lot, but I didn't want to make dedicated OpenSUSE videos. I've made a few, but not a lot. But I thought that after a year, I'd share some thoughts with you guys about my experience with OpenSUSE so far and kind of explain some of the things that I really, truly like about it, a couple of things that I don't care so much, and a couple of regrets that I have after a year of using this. So, And there are a couple that I need to share with you. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So first off, OpenSUSE has been astonishingly stable. And given the fact that I'm using Tumbleweed, which is the rolling release version of OpenSUSE, the fact that it has been this stable is just astonishing to me. Like, it has been just rock solid. Like, as rock solid as Debian ever has been for me. Like, maybe even more so. And that's really weird, given the fact that I do have a rolling release distro on this computer. It gets the brand new versions of most things. Like, it's running the most recent version of Plasma right now. And it runs really really well i haven't had hardly any problems at all now it doesn't mean that it's been perfect and to be honest with you the last two or three weeks have been the most unstable that it has been and i i, I say unstable because it hasn't really been unstable at all it just has had some packaging issues there was one where mesa was causing some really weird artifacting and whatever so that was quickly fixed and all you had to, there was some workarounds that you could do until it was fixed in, in the repository so that wasn't hard at all uh, and then there was something really weird where pipewire broke screen capture on wayland and that was fixed before i even knew it was a problem so those are the only really two big issues that i've had in terms of rolling release problems over the course of the entire year and, th and that just is unheard of i used arch for a long time and while i didn't use it consecutively for a year Probably if you add up all the times that I used Arch or an Arch-based distro, you could probably get a year or more out of that. And I was having problems constantly with rolling release problems, things that were caused because I was on the bleeding edge of all that software. With OpenSUSE, it just hasn't been the case. It has been so very stable. I can't even tell you how impressed I am. Now, all that being said, I have, because I've become a little bit of an OpenSUSE fanboy, talked to a lot of people who have either 
decided to try OpenSUSE because of me or have tried OpenSUSE in the past. And one of the things that I know to be true is that if you get OpenSUSE installed and working, it's going to be very stable for you. It's usually the installation that trips people up and it's probably hardware related. I can't say that for sure, but usually there's two camps of people in this case. Those people who could get it installed and then really like it or the people who just couldn't get it installed at all. Now, there's a small third group that complain constantly about Zipper and just have to watch Zipper work for whatever reason. I don't know. We'll talk more about Zipper here in a minute. But, you know, there is that small group that got it installed but couldn't stand Zipper. But the vast majority of people who got it installed would at least say that OpenSUSE is a, a good and stable distro. But there's quite a few people who just couldn't get it installed. So I don't know what's going on there, really. Like I said, I, it probably is a hardware problem or a hardware incompatibility thing. But that seems to be the breakdown there. So another thing that I really, truly like is YAST. Now, I know that when I say that, people are like, Matt, YAST looks like it was developed in 1996. And you're absolutely true. And that's because it was developed in 1996 and it hasn't seen very many UI refreshes since then. That's okay. You don't use YAST because it looks pretty. You use YAST because it's really, really powerful. Now, I don't actually use YAST all that much, but one of the things that I really like about it is that I can go in there and easily switch out my desktop environments from one thing to another. I can uninstall the one that I'm using, reinstall or install another one, do it all at the same time, reboot, and everything's back to where it needs to be or where, it want, where I want it to be. That's really cool. And it's not something that's as easy to do on other distros, mainly because they don't do a good job of containing all the dependencies in one thing and they tend to intermingle those dependencies with other things which means that you have to be aware of what you're uninstalling because it might take something else with it i haven't had that problem at all on OpenSUSE. if i want to uninstall gnome it just uninstalls the gnome stuff leaves everything else that has to stay there behind and your system continues to work it's really great and on top of that is if you do come across something that you've messed up, like you've uninstalled something, and this is the big one why I really like OpenSUSE, is they, they do ButterFS right. Now, other distros use ButterFS, like Fedora uses ButterFS, Arch has as, a, as an option. Um, many other distros have it as an option, or you can do it on your own manually. OpenSUSE does ButterFS correctly in that it has Snapper set up right out of the box. It runs right out of the box. You don't have to turn it on. That means that every time you do an update on OpenSUSE or every time you install a program, you are going to have a snapshot of that thing pre and post. That means if something goes wrong, you can easily go back. The number of times over the course of the last year where I've decided to do a rollback with Snapper, which is the tool that you use to do a ButterFS snapshot rollback, the number of times I've had to do that is many. Like, I've done that many times over the course of last year. Now, hardly any of them are OpenSUSE's fault. It's just because I'm a tinker. I do things, like kooky things, like install five different desktop environments at once or, you know, one every single day or whatever. And I do weird ADD stuff like that all the time. And because that's true, sometimes it's just easier, instead of tediously uninstalling all that stuff, even in Yast, just to roll back to before I went crazy. And then I can just go on from there. And that is such an awesome experience. Now, that's more of a feature of ButterFS. But the reason why I say OpenSUSE does it the, the correct way is because all its stuff is set up out of the box. It's very easy to use if you know what you're doing. And it just works. Other distros don't set it up that way. And you kind of have to finagle it into working. And that means that it doesn't always work. And if you don't remember to set it up properly, it's like having insurance after the house already has burned down. You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. So the fact that it's already set up out of the box on OpenSUSE is very good. And it's one of those things where I've talked about it a lot. Like I am, as much as I'm an OpenSUSE fanboy, I'm a ButterFS fanboy much more because I think it is the best file system on Linux period. Now, there are some exceptions to that in terms of like RAID and stuff like that that it has problems with some of the versions of RAID. But other than that, if you're just a regular user, ButterFS has been fantastic and the ability to do snapshots is just primo. It's so good. Do people still say primo? I don't know. Why did I say primo? I don't know either. So that's another thing that I really, really like. The last thing that I should mention is software availability, because that's one of those things where you really kind of, I, I, where I was really kind of cautious about 
OpenSUSE because I was coming from like a, like a long time off and on user of the AUR. Like I was a big proponent of the AUR. And leaving that behind permanently was kind of frightening because you have the AUR as kind of a security blanket. If there's something that you need, the AUR probably has it. And that's awesome. That's what makes the AUR great. And when you leave the AUR behind, you lose that security blanket. Well, on OpenSUSE, they kind of have the AUR. It's called the Open Build Service. Now, it's not the same. So all of you Arch guys out there who've also used OpenSUSE, you're going to be in the comments like, oh, these things aren't the same. They don't run the same way. That's true. Absolutely true. I completely understand that you're freaking out right now. But in terms of software, you can get a lot of stuff in the Open Build Service that you can get in the AUR. Now, it's not... They're not like if you were to compare package counts, the AUR is going to win. Like that, that, that's true. I'm, I'm 100% sure that's true. But for the most part, if you need something that's not in the OpenSUSE repositories or one of the various offshoots of the repositories, like Pac Man or whatever, you can go to the OBS and find that package. So things like Yazi, which is a file manager in the terminal, not in the OpenSUSE repositories at one point, I think it is now but it was on the OBS for a long time. And that's where you could go get it. And it would just install like that using OPI. Now, those are some abbreviations there that you don't really know what they are. They're just package managers in a package repository system. It's all great. Maybe I'll make a video on the on the OBS someday. I, I've been kind of planning it, but I've never really gotten around to it. But the point is, is that in terms of software availability, OpenSUSE has been excellent because not only do we have, you know, the OpenSUSE repository, we have Pac-Man, which is where a lot of proprietary stuff lies, and we have the Open Build service. And that means that there's a large collection of software there. Now, is it 100% complete? No, absolutely not. There's still some things on there that I still have to build from some scratch. But a lot of those things that I have to build from scratch, I'd have to do on other system or on other distros as well because they don't have them either. So it's just kind of rare things, you know. And there are a few things that I've decided to use the Flatpak version of. Now, most of that's just because a lot of companies are, use Flatpak as their, like, official package. And I want that official package. So things like OBS, things like Vivaldi, I use those Flatpaks because they tend to get updated faster and they tend to break less. So... There are some situations where I blatantly choose not to use the OpenSUSE repositories in favor of Flatpak, but that's just more of a personal choice than the OpenSUSE repositories not having what I want because it has Vivaldi, it has OBS, it has all the things, uh, but those things sometimes don't get updated uh, as fast as the Flatpaks do. So software availability has been, software availability, and went kind of stuttery there, software availability has been very, very good on OpenSUSE, and I've been very, very impressed by it. Now, those have all been very positive things. Let me talk about a couple negative things. Now, I have complained about Zipper in the past, and since that last video where I talked about Zipper being slow, a couple things have happened. First, it has gotten faster, a little bit at least, not a lot, and one of the things that it used to do was that it would update the repositories every time you did a search. Now that is off by default. So it no longer searches, or at least for, for whatever reason for me, it doesn't search, it doesn't refresh the repositories when you do a search. That means that searching is faster. Another thing that is good is that I've realized that the thing that slows Zipper down the most is the Pac-Man repository. Now, if you're on Arch, don't confuse this with Pac-Man, P-A-C-M-A-N. This is P-A-C-K-M-A-N. Don't know why they're called the same thing. Don't know why they chose that, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The point is that Pac-Man is a repository which has a lot of drivers in it. It has all the codecs and stuff in it. And you kind of need it if you want to play videos or listen to music or have display graphic, graphic drivers, all that stuff, right? The problem is, and I don't know why this is the case, but the Pac-Man repository only has mirrors in Germany and China. Now, I don't know if you can tell from the accent or not, but I'm not from Germany and I'm not from China. So I live in the good old US of A. There are no mirrors here. There's no mirrors in Canada or Mexico or or Britain. Like, like <laughs> There's no mirrors anywhere outside of Germany and China. I don't know why that's the case. It's really really weird. I'm going to guess it's because of licensing issues. I'm just going to guess that's the case. But that aside, I really wish there were some mirrors closer to me because that'd make Pac-Man much faster to update in terms of, you know, Zipper. And that in itself would make Zipper faster. And I think that 
a lot of people will notice this. Like if you use OpenSUSE for a fairly long time, you'll notice that when you first install OpenSUSE before you've installed Codex, Zipper is actually pretty fast. Now, is it the fastest pa package manager out there? Absolutely not. Yeah, uh, Apt is faster, Pacman's faster, DNF is on similar speed, I would say, at least DNF4, DNF5 is way faster, but the thing that s slows Zipper down right there at the beginning is that p once you install those codecs, Pac-Man is enabled, and that slows Zipper way down. Another thing that holds it behind all the rest is that it still doesn't have parallel downloads, and probably never will at this point. I'm 100% I'm uninformed on this outside of a couple conversations with OpenSUSE developers, but apparently... Parallel downloads just are never going to be happening. They're, they've been working on it since 2016. The development has pretty much stopped completely because they're focusing more on the immutable stuff, which doesn't use Zipper anymore. So we're not getting parallel downloads, which means that not only are the mirrors a problem, because that's where primarily Zipper is slow during the refresh of the mirrors, and especially the more repositories you add to OpenSUSE, the slower it gets, and specifically Pac-Man seriously slows things down. But also, once you start downloading things, it does things one at a time, and that that means it opens up a new connection every time it needs to download something, and that takes time. It's, it does the whole handshake thing, and it's not a fast experience by any means. Now, like I said, if you disable Pac-Man, you're going to notice a difference. I, I swear. Now, is it going to be, like I said, it's going to be super fast? No, but it will be faster. Of course, then you lose access to all of your updates for all of your drivers and all of your codecs and all that stuff, which is something that you'll have to decide whether or not it's worth it or not. So, Zipper, it is slow, but here's what I've been saying about that. Stop watching your terminal scroll text by, okay? Now, I understand from a... Installation of software standpoint, I understand you are you really want that piece of software now or as fast, fast as possible. Zipper is not great at that. But if you're talking about the updates themselves, stop watching your terminal. Go touch grass or watch a YouTube video or whatever you have to do. And, and you won't notice it being slow because it's just happening in the background. So uh, that, that's my solution. It's not a great solution, but whatever. So that's another. that's one thing that I... I it's not a great thing, but it's not horrible. I, I've gotten way used to it. Another thing that I've noticed on OpenSUSE over the course of the last year is that the boot times are atrociously slow. Like, like really, really slow. I'm talking like between somewhere between 45 and a minute 20 for my system to boot, depending on the day uh, that I'm booting it on. And that's not great. There's Something wrong recently with OpenSUSE, or at least my install of OpenSUSE, that causes it to freeze at a certain point for... I, I don't know if you've ever watched the text scroll by when you're doing a, a Linux boot, but sometimes it, it has a wait time on a certain process, and it says a limit of like a minute 30. Mine does that every single time I open up a boot into the, the system. Now, it doesn't make it to the entire minute 30, which is I'm, I'm grateful for, uh, but oftentimes it's in the 60, 60 to to 70 second range, and that's not great. <laughs> like, I, I leave my computer on most of the time anyways, but when I do need to do a reboot, like after an update, I don't want to have to wait for it to reboot that long, and it's kind of, you know, not great. So, the boot time's not great. Now, I don't know if that is a specific thing to this computer, or if it's more of a general OpenSUSE problem. But in terms of my experience on this particular computer, that's the case. Another thing that really bothered me up until recently was that for whatever reason, when you had to use Flatpak, it always required a password or the pseudo password in order to actually install a Flatpak. Recently that changed. I don't know why it changed. Uh, I don't know if an update came down that changed that behavior or I did something that changed that behavior. But by default, when you install Flatpak and you installed FlatHub, you had to, every time you installed something or uninstalled something, you'd have to enter the password. And that's not great if you're in a window manager that doesn't have a GUI version of Polkit. It will allow you to do it, but it's not fantastic. And and it's better in a desktop environment that does have a GUI version of Polkit. It just pops up and asks you the, the, the password or whatever. But I don't want to have to do that because that means I have to, again, watch the terminal as things are either updating or installing. And I don't normally do that. I just set it and go do something else and come back to it. At the beginning, when I didn't know that it was asking for a password, I'd set it and go. 
and then come back and it'd still be asking for the password and that means that I hadn't made any progress on the install or update or whatever it was I was doing. So that behavior has changed recently. I don't know why it changed or how it changed, but the beginning that really bugged me. So finally, the last thing that I want to do is talk about at least one regret that I have going into, you know, after a year. And most of it is regarding like envy because I have a little bit of immutable envy. <laughs> so I, I watch the stuff that George Castor do, has done and, and his, his team have done with the immutable stuff on Fedora, like Bazite and, and Kino White and all those stuff, all, the Universal Blue Project, all that stuff. And it is so cool. Like, like it's really, really cool. And it's, you know, very, very stable. And, and they're doing things in neat and innovative ways. And I see that stuff, and like, and then I see that OpenSUSE has also started working on some of the immutable stuff. Like they have Aeon, and I'm gonna forget the KDE version of it, because uh, because they keep changing the damn name. Stop changing the names. I, they've only changed it once, but I, I know it as Micro Micro OS, right? The Micro OS is the immutable project from OpenSUSE, and I see that, and I like, you know, maybe I should have changed to. The immutable version of OpenSUSE. Now it's still very much early days, and I, I don't think that I'd be happy on it. I don't think it's as stable as I'd like it to be. I, I don't know for sure because I've never actually used it. But uh, because it's early days, I assume that you know things are changing, and that usually leads to breakage, right? So, but I do have the envy of an immutable system. I don't know why I have it because I think it's mostly because of the cool stuff that's going on in Fedora Land. But that's the new and shiny thing, and I'm kind of wanting the new and shiny thing. That That's what always led to my whole distro hopper thing in the past. So there's a little bit of envy there that has led to some regret, because I had the option of choosing Micro OS at the time. I could have very well done it. I just didn't. I chose Tumbleweed because it was more main, a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more maintained, had more software available to it used a package manager that actually knew what was going on there, all that stuff. So I chose Tumbleweed. I'm not going to switch away from Tumbleweed just because I have this envy, but that's one of the, you know, regrets that I have. My other regret is that I have done a couple reinstalls. Now, neither of those reinstalls were because things were going wrong. They were because Matt's a moron. And I installed a lot of software, and it was just easier to do a reinstall than, you know, start on installing stuff. Now, that, especially that first reinstall, I, w I had 6,000 packages installed through Zipper. And while my system was running great, it was fantastic. It was very, I lasted probably 11 full months, well, probably 10 full months on that one install. Uh, and you, and it could tell you, I had, 6,000 packages on there. I wanted something a little bit fresher and, you know, less crusty with a whole bunch of stuff installed. So I reinstalled and now I'm down to 3,026 packages or at least I'm back, more likely I should say I'm back up to that. Now that's not fair because uh, OpenSUSE counts packages kind of like Debian does where everything is individual. So you're getting a package every time there's like a minuscule library that counts as a package. So you're not going to cram things together and count a whole bunch of like containerized stuff like Arch does. That's how they get all of their package numbers down. So uh, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but I, I kind of wish that I'd kept that initial install for at least the full year because then, then I could have said that I did, but I didn't. So I have done a reinstall. That didn't break the rules or whatever. I was allowed re to reinstall if I needed to. And really, the only, like I said, the only reason I did the reinstall was because I was trying to clean things up and it was just easier to do it that way. So yeah, so that's it on OpenSUSE for the first year. I adore this distro so much. It's so good. It's very stable. It's treated me well. The community has been very good. They do tend to get embroiled in drama a lot. They're they're very uh, interested in drama. Like right now, they're having this whole drama because the SUSE Corporation decided that OpenSUSE probably shouldn't use the OpenSUSE brand anymore. So they're going to try to rename it or they're discussing renaming it and there's this whole drama because people don't want to name it some people are okay with renaming it and also the things that they're saying like oh this is what we could go and rename it to are stupid like there's one geeko is the, the thing that they're trying to think because that's the name of the the, the chameleon uh <laughs> It's, it, they like their drama, those guys, so I try to stay out of that, but the community overall has been very good as well, and, and I, I found myself getting more and more active in the forums, which has also been something that I've not done before, because I usually don't stick around a distribution long enough to take part in the community, or get stickers, so...
there you go. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on any of the stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcasts, just like all of these fine people. I'm off camera here now. <laughs> but uh, anyways, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon, YouTube, and Kofi. Uh, Patreon.com slash LinuxCast is where you can go join all those people if you want. I post an exclusive weekly podcast for all of my patrons on Patreon.com. So if you want to hear me ramble about random stuff, mostly all Linux related, but still random stuff. And they're all rambles, very uh, brain to mouth, no filter kind of thing. Head on over to Patreon and subscribe to any of the tiers. Uh, you get a weekly podcast along with those other benefits that I offer. So head on over there. Uh, Kofi and YouTube, those links will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody again who does support me. I truly do appreciate it. You can also head on over to the store if you don't want to become a member and just grab some merch if you want to support me. I have t-shirts and hats and hoodies and desk mats and all sorts of stuff. That's available at shop.linuscast.org. Thank you so very much for all those who have gone over there and got some merch. If you haven't, head on over shop at the Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.